Hello. My name is Maria Jalakar. Welcome to my show, Let's Talk About History. Today, I'd like to introduce my guest, Dale Plummer, Norwich's historian. Welcome, Dale, to my show. Thank you for joining me. Always a pleasure to be on your show. Great. Good to see you. So we have a few things going on in Norwich coming up um, pertaining to history that you're participating in. Um, can you please tell me about the World War I reenactment that's going to be going on at the Green in Norwich Town? Yes, I'd be happy to. As part of our, our efforts to uh, restore the um, captured German howitzer that was displayed on Chelsea Parade, uh, we're doing a number of educational events uh, about World War I to familiarize people with it. Um, and as you know, we had a, a um, donut day on the green back in June, which was so successful that we've decided to do another day on the green on October 2nd. In that day, uh, or on that day, we'll have um, a field hospital set up with an ambulance. We'll show people how, um, you know, wounded men were were uh, treated in World War One. Uh, we'll also have a display of the home front. So we're going to call this uh, the home front to the Western Front, and we'll have um, uh, people doing what they were doing here in Norwich, which was um, selling war bonds and, and uh, saving stamps uh, to the public, um, uh, knitting socks and other uh, apparel for the troops, and um, rolling bandages, a number of other things. So it should be it should be a lot of fun. It's being co-sponsored by uh, UCFS, and uh, we may even have a, a pop-up vaccination. Uh, there for uh, either the flu or COVID or both. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, we're also planning a whole series of programs in September and October related to World War I, um, including a movie on September 18th at Lisbon Landing, um, Testament of Youth, about a British uh, nurse in World War I. Where's the movie going to be held? At the Lisbon uh, Theater, AMC Theater, oh, on September 18th. Okay. We'll be giving All more right, information what, about that. Yes. And what are the dates for the movie? That is only going to be on September 18th. Okay. And um, let's see. What Can you tell me again what the dates will be for the um, re reenactment, World War one reenactment? That, that will be on October 2nd, which is a Saturday. It's also the beginning of Walktober, and it's an event in the Walktober calendar. Uh, I'm also doing a series of walks, as well as arranging for presentations on World War I. And those will be held on Tuesday nights at Park Congregational Church, the World War I presentations. Um, oh, really? So I'm going to have a very busy fall. Yes. Okay, there's going to be, did you say talks? Yes. At, at Park Congregational group. Church, starting okay. on Saturday, September 7th. Very exciting. Um, the first talk will be by Christine Pitsley from the State Library. Christine mm -hmm. led a group of Connecticut teenagers to France uh, in 2019, where they restored some of the trenches around that village that our troops, our Connecticut troops, occupied when they were attacked by the Germans. Um, so uh, very exciting. The French were supposed to send students to Connecticut to do an excavation of one of Rochambeau's camps here in Connecticut in 2020, but COVID came in the way. That won't happen until 2022. But it's a really great cultural exchange between uh, here and France. Okay, where was that supposed to take place? Um, that's going to be at Park Congregational Church, September 7th. 
The Russian bow in 2022. Oh, 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 no, no, no. The 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 talk on the 2019 um, excavation and restoration will be uh, this September 7th, and it's about the the Connecticut teenagers who restored trenches in France. And oh. A group of French teenagers is going to be over here in 2022, hopefully, um, excav excavating some, at least one of the camps that Rochambeau occupied when he led his French troops through Connecticut. It should be a very oh. exciting thing when that happens. Yes. Could you tell me where the camp is? I think that it's one of the ones in the, um, um, I think the one they're thinking of is in um, Middlebury, Connecticut. Okay. Which apparently right. is so, a um, Yeah. Can you tell me, and how can the public participate in that in 2022? Well, um, they will more. really, yes. That's going Looking to be um, basically high school students. Mm -hmm. I think that um, they would have to contact uh, Christine, um, you know, probably through their schools to make arrangements. They had students from all over the state, including a couple of them from New London. Uh, this was in 2019. So it would be great if there was an opportunity for some Norwich high school students, uh, NFA students, yeah. Yeah. to participate in the, um, um, well, Actually, they won't be participating in the Rochambeau dig because that will be French students. But they'll be going back over to Seychelles uh, probably in the next year. But we'll we'll find out more about that on September seventh. Yeah, it's it's a really exciting program. They've done mm -hmm. amazing work. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about any walks that are coming up that you're going to be doing? Oh yes, I'm uh, I'm doing a walk on the first weekend in uh, in October, uh, a part of October. It will be in the downtown. It will focus on the flu or influenza uh, pandemic. Over uh -huh. 800 people died in New London County um, in three months in uh, 1918. At the same time as our men or boys were, you know, dying in France. Um, with the um, you know fight against the uh, the Germans, um, yeah, and then October wasn't that the anniversary of the end of the war, World War One? That, yes, that's right. Okay. But there was a lot of hard fighting before the end, and our men were uh, very much involved in in the victory. Um, yeah. But it's ironic that it, that the flu was ravaging people here at the same time that you know. Uh, yeah, sure people is. were dying in, in France. So that's the first weekend. The second mm -hmm. weekend in October, I'm doing an East Great Plain walking tour. Of course, that was mm -hmm. the site of the battle between uh, the Mohegans and the Narragansetts um, in the 1600s. Uh, the third weekend in uh, October, I'm going to do a tour of, Nor of um, Norwich Town really exploring the lives of, uh, you know, black residents in the 1700s and early 1800s. And that there's a lot. That should be very, very interesting. Uh, and then I'll do a Bean Hill walking tour on October, on the, on the fourth weekend, October 23rd and 24th. Uh, and again, that's the uh, home of um, David Ruggles, who was yeah. a, a major figure. Now that's up by Friendlies, right? Going towards... Yes, Franklin. that's right. Yeah. Near the bowling alley and the little green up there. That, that would be Bean yeah. Hill. You're absolutely yeah. right. Okay. Yes. That's where David Ruggles lived. In that yes. area? Yes, oh. exactly. As a boy. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it, it packed a lot in. But I wanted to emphasize... Um, African-American history uh, in two of these walks uh, because, of course, there's a lot of focus on that right now, but also, you know, Norwich was an important 
um, site of, of black residents. I mean, there was a large black community here in the 1700s, early 1800s, and they played a role in the uh, in the movement to get rid of slavery. Definitely. Yeah, did you say? Um... Oh, in Norwich Town, that you were talking about the African American or Black residents right. in Norwich Town. Did what era? What century did you say? Sixteenth, uh, seventeenth. Oh, actually, 17th. the the eighteenth uh, and nineteenth, early nineteenth. Oh, okay. Seventeen hundreds. Right. I may I may have misspoken. I'm not used to Sorry. to yeah, doing no, something it, like this. I wasn't sure if you said seventeenth or eighteenth century. 18th there were there were some enslaved uh, africans uh here in the um 1600s but but relatively few but we do know about some of them yeah and of course um you know it, it's also because we have recovered the um, gravestone of um my clock wait a minute Oh, it's the clock. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, we've, reco we've recovered the gravestone of one of them and brought it back to yeah, Norwich. Yeah, I was well, first. Now, David Ruggles is also buried in Norwich Town Cemetery, isn't he? He's buried in the Yantic Cemetery. Oh, he that's died right. In 1849, after uh, Yantic was uh, begun. And unfortunately, okay. his grave is not marked. Yes. Now, the day had an article about how you recovered or you found um, a gravestone um, in, I believe, Alabama that was originally in the Norristown Cemetery right. um, by only, doing yes. research. Yes, can well, you? It was a, a Zazina Zibberay and a Bristol Zibberay. Um Can you go into more detail for the viewers who who didn't read the article in the day? Well, the sure, day. I'd be happy to. About. Okay, thank you. Well, it, it all stemmed from a phone call that I received about a year ago uh, from a gentleman in Savannah. His neighbor had uh, found this gravestone uh, in her daughter's possessions. Her daughter had unfortunately uh, died of cancer. Uh, her daughter apparently got it, the gravestone from her father's estate her father had been a Norwich City councillor in 1979 to 1980. So we think that he removed this gravestone and brought it with him to Charleston, South Carolina. Well, uh, Linda um, moved it to her home. Her neighbor saw it, was interested, and offered to do some research and discovered that the uh, Zaberi family was from Norwich, Connecticut. So he called me as the city historian. Uh, and showed me the inscription on the stone. So I compared that with the um, list of inscriptions in the Norwichtown Burial Ground by George um, S. Porter that was published by the DAR. And sure enough, it matched exactly uh, that inscription. So it was without question the stone that was here in Norwich. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately... Her father's stone, which mentioned his being a captive from the land of Africa, disappeared sometime between 1895 and when George Porter did his survey of the uh, cemetery. And uh, we don't know what happened to it. So one of my goals would be to see if we can recover her dad's stone. Um, yeah. It's really exciting. <laughs> this yeah. is one of the best things that happened to me as city historian, actually. Yes. I mean, much research must have gone into that. Well, tedious well, work figuring out well, the the inscription matched the original. You know that. Well, that was very easy because uh, the D A R printed the the inscriptions in a book in 1933, and oh. so it was simply a question of. And I have I have a copy in my office, mm -hmm. so I simply of, of the book the book yes oh. yeah. One's also here at Otis Library. Um, so it's, it was relatively easy to do. Now, the hard part is going to be doing more research on the family. We know something about them. Um, uh, Dezina was a young girl. Uh, she was 11 years old when she died October 17, 
1781. Um, her sister, Rodiza, had died um, the same year, uh, some months before. She was older. Um, they had a brother, Bristol, or Bristol, who was in the revolution and in the revolution for five years, from 1776 to 1781, and Bristow was freed by the slaveholder, uh, Joshua Downer of Preston, uh, in 1781. So it's a very exciting thing. Bristow, we know from his Revolutionary War records, was present when Burgoyne surrendered at Saratoga. Um, and... Uh, so obviously, and we know the family owned property in Norwich. They owned a house in Norwich. Um, oh, do you know? So were, do you know which house? No, we don't. Oh. Um, whether or not it's still there, we don't know at this point. We're going to try to. That's another subject of research. I would doubt that it is. It was probably mm -hmm. a more modest home, and right. not. Would you? Would survive. you know that? Do you know about where it might be in Norwich? Well, I would suspect that it was in Norwich Town or Bean Hill because okay. there, you know, there was a, for one thing, if it had been in the downtown area and um, they had died downtown, they would have been buried in the city cemetery, mm. which was active at that time. So almost the certainly cemetery. they were. In, which, which cemetery is that? The city cemetery. That's the one up on the hill. Um, on up Oak from Street? the. Yes, Oak Street. Oh, yes. oh I yeah, didn't know called, that. Okay. Sometimes called the Oak Street Burial Ground or Oak Street yeah. Cemetery or, you know, these things uh, have a number of different names. But yes, and that goes back to the 1700s. So um, do you think they would have owned some land on the uh, Zebri, um after they were freed for farming? Yes, yeah. Yeah. Well, we, we don't know. We really don't oh, okay. know. We never bought a house. We don't know how much. I'll have to, I have to look at the land records. We do know that they bought a house. Um, mm -hmm. And that later, Bristol, the son of Bristol, uh, Bristol Jr., uh, moved to New York State, upstate New York, where he died in 1813. We know that from the pension records. And... Mm -hmm. um, uh, I believe he was a property owner there too, but it may be uh, we'll have to do a field trip to Rensselaerville and um, uh, see what we can find out there. Mm -hmm. it, this is an, to... Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. This is a still unfolding thing. Yes, um, yes. You're um, going to be doing the research on the, on the father's stone. Right. I mean, uh, Bristol Sr. Bristol yes. Zabir. See if we can we can locate it. Um, and you know, um, uh, Dane Rue, who is the uh, interim director at Slater, has been very helpful. They have it right now. While we decide, you know, what to um, do with it, my inclination is to take this actually very important stone and, and preserve it at Slater, and put up a replica at the burial ground so that the original one is, is safe. Yeah. Do you think you might be able to find some information in the DAR, the Faith Trumbull Chapter Library? Yes, I do, because they bought uh, from uh, George S. Porter's estate. He died in 1908. They purchased all of his uh, documents about the uh, Norristown burial ground. So there should be information in there. He took photographs. Um, really? I'm, my hope is that he took a photo of uh, her stone so that we can find out just where it was. Unfortunately, when he did his work, there was no trace of, of uh, the father's stone. But it may be somewhere around, you know, you never know. Yeah. If we don't start looking for it, well, we won't find it. Right. And the it's more people trying. know about it. Yeah, know, the, doing the some research where it gets out. And the other possibility is that there are descendants of this family still uh, around today. I did an mm -hmm. article in the day in uh, the 1990s about uh, Guy Drock, an enslaved blacksmith held by uh, Captain Bushnell, and turned out that someone 
who was a descendant of Guy Drock and his wife, Sarah Powers, uh, Googled the day and found that and contacted me. So we now have uh, a connection with literally thousands of people across the country descended from an enslaved person and his wife here in Norwich, Connecticut. It's, it's very, very nice. And their house is still standing on Church Street. So it's not out of the question that um, the uh, Zaberi's home is still uh, intact. You know. Now, whose home is on Church on Church Street? Uh, Guy Drock. Guy oh. Drock was a blacksmith. His shop was across Church Street from the house, uh, where the parking lot is now for the um, um, well, what used to be the People's Bank, mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, it's it's still there, amazingly enough. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the wonderful things about history, as you know yourself, uh, when you start mm -hmm. digging around, uh, literally as well as figuratively, uh, you, you never know what you're going to find. And right. sometimes it finds you. Mm -hmm. So th this is really, I mean, it, this is, this is, very exciting. The World War I stuff is, is also very exciting because yes. there, you know, we're trying to focus on the, on the role of women in the war. And, you know, women were at the front. They were ambulance drivers. They were Red Cross nurses. They were Salvation Army lassies making donuts. Uh, they, they, um, uh, they were telephone operators. It's, you know, we don't appreciate and then at, in, at home, they were doing uh, home gardens, canning, um, all kinds of things. So we have the opportunity now to really understand more about the role of blacks in this community um, right. in the 1700s. I'd, and I'd, also, like, I'd, like to get, I'd like to get to a couple more questions. Sure. Oh, I'm sorry. Out. I got <laughs> That's okay. carried away. Uh, I'd like to get some more questions then. Could you tell me about the, the William... Buckingham House um, down here on Main Street, and um, are they holding any meetings um, again uh, for people that are interested in the Civil War? I think that will probably wait um, until next year. Uh, we certainly will be doing that, but okay. you know we're still in the COVID thing. The rooms there are relatively small and. You know, you don't have part congregational, for instance, where we're having the World War One meetings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, has all the facilities. Uh, they have large spaces. It's much safer. Um, and um, but I think we'll be seeing that um, coming back next year, 2022, because Buckingham is such an important figure in Connecticut history, one of the great governors yeah. of the state of Connecticut without a doubt, and from Norwich. Yeah, from Norwich, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we can be proud of him, unlike certain yes. other people that I won't mention. <laughs> mm -hmm. Huntington. Um, the Huntingtons, we can be very proud of. Norwich that, except Benedict Arnold, maybe. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I'm not one of Benedict Arnold's fans, but yeah. that's all right. I'd like to know if there's any been any news about the Reed and Hughes building. What's going on with that? Well, I think that is developing. We have uh, we have someone actually interested in in uh, developing the building. Um, they seem to be very serious. Uh, I met with uh, with them, uh, the mayor also, um, and uh, some other city officials, and they are very interested. Um, you know, they see it as a, as a possible market rate apartments. Um, you know, it's a complicated deal because the building is no longer owned by the city. It's, it's owned by, you know, um, uh, the nonprofit Women's Institute. Um, and um, uh, but they uh, pretty much are out of the business of developing properties right uh -huh. now. And so they have decided to, you know, um, stop all the projects they were involved with. Unfortunately, ours is, was one of them. But mm -hmm. I think if this development, uh, this developer follows through, it'll be a very exciting de development. Um, 
they have mm -hmm. the uh, the means to to do a good job. Um, you know, the city will have to, I think, be involved in it, of course, but it should really, it will help the downtown because it's right across from the War Eagan, right next to the yeah. Shannon building. Yeah. So when the Reed and Hughes is restored, you'll have three buildings right next to each other. They'll reinforce each other. Uh-huh. It, it, it will be. Are there any be, dates being thrown around about when there might be a, you know, I think that's too early. Or, yeah, that's yeah, too early to pop, say. Yeah, yeah, but just I ideas think, are being thrown around with the reading. Well, I, no, more than ideas. I think they are actually moving forward with. Um, oh, oh, that'd be nice. This. But be nice. You know, the thing is that that um, there are a number of these real estate deals are very complicated to put together. Yeah. Yeah. So I think they're in the in the process of, of putting those pieces together. And I'm hoping we'll see some good news, you know, again um, in this next year. Yeah. It would be wonderful. Uh-huh. That would be wonderful. Um, I have we, another we, I have another question though so about <laughs> Dizana and Zibri and Bristol Zibri. Um, how did you find out in the first place about these gravestones? They were in Norwich well, Town Graveyard, right? Right, exactly. Well, the thing is, they aren't there anymore. And the only oh. reason I found out was because of the phone call from Savannah um, with the information about the inscription. When I read that, oh, I realized that, that you know this was a very important piece of our, our local history. Yeah. Um, and I also was shocked to discover that her father's stone which is mentioned in 1895 by um, Miss Perkins in her uh, old houses of the ancient town of Norwich. That, mm -hmm. that stone was not present in the graveyard when um, George Porter did his work in the early 1900s. So wow. somewhere in a 10 to 13 year period, that stone disappeared. Yeah. And that's very disturbing. Yeah. You know, it may be that someone took it and used it for a patio, you know, or um, it got thrown into a stone piece wall. Of history in their house, yeah. I guess, or something, you know. I don't, why so, was some, I don't, um, well, you, now you don't do any more walks or tours uh, through the Norwich Town graveyard at Halloween, right? I don't participate in that, no. I mean, I've, that's, okay. other people yeah. are doing that. Um, by North the, uh, by the, yes, by the end of October, I'm pretty exhausted from all the other things yeah. that are going on. Yeah, you're okay, yeah. Yes. Tired okay, out. Okay, so, so you I, have I take quite Halloween a, off. Yeah, you have quite a few, um, you know, um, things coming up in the next month. Um, if there's anybody who'd like to contact you, what's the best way? Email, phone, or? E email is the best way. Um, and what could you give them your email address? I'll be happy to. It's Norwich City Historian, mm -hmm. all run together, lowercase, Norwich City Historian at gmail.com. All right. Thank you. So thank you. I'm going to close. Thank you so much, Dale, for updating us on the Reed News building and telling us about what tours are going to be coming up and. Sure. Um, I'd like to thank everyone for joining me to, for watching the show today. And I would just like to tell everyone that if you haven't gotten your vaccine yet, your COVID vaccine, I hope you do. Um, and um, together we can do this. So stay well, stay safe, and thank you for watching my show. Thank you, Dale. Okay. Hello. Oh, you you can leave now. You can. Oh, okay. I'll.